It was announced just a few days ago that GNOME will officially exclude AI-generated extensions. When I read this news, I thought it was a joke, yet another demonstration of how superficial some open source communities have become. Let me make something clear. The fact that I use an artificial voice doesn't deprive me of the right to discuss this topic on my channel, nor does it impose on me the duty to prove that this is the case. Rather than focusing on the supposed monotony of my voice, ask yourselves whether the facts and references I bring are real, and whether the conclusions I reach are interesting, or at least close to the truth. I don't like labels, and the idea of banning code simply because it was generated by a tool, regardless of whether it's valid or not, is pure prejudice. It's a limitation that descends into the lowest depths of ignorance. Artificial intelligence is a tool. I've tried to explain this in some of my videos. It's a mathematical equation applied to human language. And neither I, nor you, nor anyone else really knows how the mechanism of human intelligence works. What is being replicated is just an artificial neural system based on equations and machine learning. It's not intelligence as we understand it. It's a tool in our hands, and I'm sorry that very few people truly understand this. I'm even more sorry that so few people understand the ontological concept of truth and reality. If an AI discovered a physical law that we don't yet know, what would we do? Would we say it's not valid because it wasn't discovered by a human being? Would we hide it, waiting for someone to discover it the right way? And even more directly, if AI is made by humans and trained on human material, isn't it simply a projection of humanity itself? Many developers around the world, people with very high levels of competence, use AI to program. Salvatore Sanfilippo, the creator of Redis, does it. And he, unlike me, gives different weight to artificial thinking, but that's another matter. The point is that AI is used as a tool. It doesn't take away skills from the developer. In fact, it amplifies them. If you want to know the code to supervise it, to direct the model, to make granular changes, all of this is inconceivable without solid foundations in programming languages. And this doesn't just apply to programmers. It applies to everyone, myself included. Have you ever tried asking ChatGPT for information, proposing a thesis, asking for explanations? Everything is projected onto us, onto what we ask and how we formulate it. And the information that comes out is often weak, incongruous, sometimes completely invented. When I wrote my video about the history of the C language, I consulted with Claude from Anthropic to gather information. The result? An enormous amount of facts invented from scratch. Names, links, events, all false, non-existent. If I hadn't had other sources, if I hadn't used other tools, I would have written complete bullshit. And excuse me, when you make videos watched by even a hundred thousand people for a competent critical audience, and I like this, there's no room for uncritical use of AI. All this preamble connects to a piece of news that's going almost unnoticed. Because here on YouTube, we're all holed up in smoke, in labels, in religious wars, while serious things are rarely discussed. Let's get to the point. At a recent open source meeting held in Japan, interesting details emerged about the use of artificial intelligence within the Linux kernel. And you know what? This is already happening. And at first glance, it's happening in a very intelligent way. AI is already integrated into what we might call thankless jobs to combat maintainer burnout in the face of ever-increasing volumes of patches. In 2024 alone, approximately 75,314 commits were recorded in the Linux kernel, and today the overall source code has exceeded 40 million total lines. It's an enormous workload. Sasha Levin has pioneered this approach through two main tools. The first is AutoCell for backporting. AutoCell, in its most recent evolution, is not a system that makes decisions in place of humans. It's a tool that works on the semantics of code. It uses embeddings to represent commits as conceptual entities, analyzing not only the code itself, but also the commit messages and the context in which those changes occur. At this point, multiple language models come into play, which don't operate authoritatively, but provide independent evaluations, a sort of voting system. These models don't decide what enters the kernel. They simply suggest whether a patch might be relevant whether it appears safe, and whether it has the characteristics to be backported to stable or LTS versions. 
The final result is never an automatic merge, but a short list, a reduced and cleaner list that allows the maintainer to see much less noise and focus only on what truly deserves attention. The decision remains human, as does the final responsibility. And this is the crucial point of the entire approach. The second area is vulnerability management. Starting in 2024, the Linux kernel began managing its own CVEs internally, reducing dependence on external entities and introducing a more direct and controlled process. Here too, artificial intelligence doesn't make decisions, but assists in the heaviest parts of the work. Analysis of historical commits, identification of recurring patterns related to security vulnerabilities, classification of patches with security-related impact, and reduction of false positives. In the past, all of this was based on fragile scripts, regex, and manual processes difficult to scale. Today, the workflow has been largely rewritten with more robust tools, often in Rust and supported by assisted classification systems. The result is much faster triage, in some cases reduced from days to minutes. But here too the same rule applies. AI accelerates, suggests, filters. The final decision always remains in the hands of people. These tools reduce triage time from days to minutes, as noted by maintainers like Shua Khan, improving productivity without replacing human judgment. There are also concrete examples of AI-generated contributions. Practical demonstrations show both the strengths and pitfalls of these tools. The hash table patch in Linux 6.15 was AI-generated by Levin, including changelog and tests. However, it was missing an obvious optimization, the double underscore read mostly attribute, and this sparked criticism not for the use of AI itself, but for the lack of transparency. In fact, in the Linux kernel, the direction is clear. AI-assisted code can be accepted, but it must be declared and subjected to greater scrutiny. The Git Resolve script introduced in release 6.16, on the other hand, was created with AI assistance, accompanied by thorough tests and documentation, and is today a tool used daily by developers. Linus Torvalds himself has stated that AI-generated code will be scrutinized with greater attention. Not exclusion, but control. Beyond the kernel, AI is influencing the broader Linux ecosystem. Vendors are exposing NPUs and accelerators to the operating system, optimizing storage and pipelines for GPU computing. External projects like CodeSurvey analyze commits to identify bugs, while commercial offerings map entire code bases. But real challenges exist. Not everyone is enthusiastic, and many senior maintainers raise legitimate concerns. The first concerns dependence on proprietary tools. There's a risk of reliving a case similar to BitKeeper, where license changes broke critical workflows. Jonathan Corbett has clearly expressed concerns about using proprietary AI tools in code reviews. The second concerns training and skill development. When AI automates tasks typically performed by juniors, it risks hindering the growth of newcomers, as observed by Stefania Druga and Dan Williams. The process of showing your work is bypassed, which is fundamental for maturing programmers. These issues make evident the need for responsible integration to avoid increasing burnout or creating new skill gaps. What are the future implications? AI is becoming the plumbing of Linux, an infrastructure that increases maintainer capabilities and automates repetitive work. Whether in the future AI will write substantial parts of code will depend on copyright issues and real technical advances. As Torvalds stated, the true value of AI lies in maintenance and inspiration not in replacement. Ongoing discussions at events like the Open Source Summit North America 2026 will help define future policies. In summary, the role of artificial intelligence in Linux kernel development is consolidating, balancing innovation and caution to ensure the project's longevity. This is the mature, intelligent, and pragmatic approach. Don't ban a priori, don't create stupid labels, but use the tool with awareness, transparency, and responsibility. Artificial intelligence is a tool, and it reminds me of the wars that accompanied the arrival of digital photography and other technologies. Those who detested them at first eventually became their greatest supporters. There are no more graphic designers working by hand with markers and rulers, but professionals who use tools like GIMP, Inkscape, and others. They're imperfect tools that, paradoxically, often worsen with evolution becoming increasingly complex and tangled in the obsessive search for new features. 
Save this video in your watch later playlist. And if in five years there hasn't been an AI bubble and a reversal of general considerations about what these models really are and what they do, I'll pay the price. I'm here. They won't replace us, but they will change our way of relating to technology. We won't have fewer programmers, but programmers who will need to understand prompts, programming, design, language, research, and context. Intelligence is human, and unfortunately so is stupidity. Gnome should take notes. See you in five years.